Before we start with the products and the materials, let's have a look at important concepts of bonding in general. Why is this important? Well, plain and simple, if, uh, if, all, if it all works, it all works. We don't have anything to talk about. But if a bond fails, it can be very helpful to look at why it has failed. And to describe that, these concepts can be very helpful. So, what are the concepts I'm talking about? It's not too chemical, just certain concepts such as adhesion. What is adhesion? Adhesion describes the force, the bonding force, the bonding strength between the adhesive and the surface. So how strong is the bond between the adhesive layer and the material surface such as a piece of leather, a piece of rubber. Adhesion scales with surface area. So it seems pretty simple if the surface, if you have double the surface, the strength is twice as large. So if you want to join two pieces, of course, um, the strength of a bond like this is much, much higher than if you just bond them at the edge. But this also implies that increasing the surface, such as through sanding, roughening the surface, also increases the bonding strength, which is one very good reason to sand the surface. Um, in general, when a bond has failed and you do not see adhesive on one side, of the material just on the other side. This implies adhesion failure on that material where no adhesive is visible. So you have to do something to improve adhesion. This can be as simple as sanding, this can be as simple as just wiping the surface with solvent, but it can also mean you have the wrong adhesive and you might need one with a certain adhes adhesion promoter in that. Very typical behavior, let's say, on polyethylene. The next important concept in bonding is cohesion. Cohesion, and as opposed to adhesion, describes the strength of a bond inside the adhesive layer or the strength of the material itself holding together. So if you have a very soft and very vulnerable material of sorts, uh, you certainly wouldn't use that, let's say, for a shoe sole because the abrasion and the strain on it would be far too great for the internal cohesion of the material. In other words, it would rip apart. Um, the same is true for an adhesive layer. If you have an adhesive like a rubber cement that is intended for bonding, let's say, pieces of fabric, pieces of upper leather together that are then stitched, this is not something you would use for soling. This is not something you would use as the sole bonding agent for a bond that is under a lot of strain because it simply wouldn't sustain that. Um, it, uh, cohesion failure in the adhesive layer is indicated by the adhesive in the finished bond after it has come apart being on both sides of the material. So in some cases it's just two separated layers, in some cases there's a little bit on this side, a little bit on that side because the adhesive layer has ripped. That can have a number of causes. Maybe the layers weren't properly joined, which is a pressing issue, which is an open time issue. Um, maybe you, choose, you, you chose the wrong adhesive. Typical mistake on PVC, on vinyl. Plasticizers break down neoprene based adhesives so the cohesion which is fine at first will deteriorate over time and the bond will fall apart. Um, so that is cohesion. Cohesion is also important for the materials itself. Typical example polyurethane based soles that can fall apart, crumble, uh, when the material has been worn for a long time. Um, crystallization, also an important concept. Crystallization is what we call also curing of the adhesive. It is when a liquid adhesive turns into a solid adhesive layer. This process must happen. If it doesn't happen, then simply you don't have a bond and it just falls apart. Um, all of this takes time. So, we can have a look at the three different times that are very important for bonding. The first, and what you can see here, is very simply put, without any units, just as a general concept, we have the bonding strength and we have time. So, as you can see, bonding strength in general in the contact adhesive it increases over time, but it doesn't do so uniformly. The first increase happens here within the drying time. 
The drying time typically ranges between a few minutes and yeah, tens of minutes on that order of magnitude for contacts and lens. Um, seconds in case of a, uh, of a super glue, which isn't the drying time. So within the drying time, enough solvent evaporates so that you can start bonding. You have zero bonding strength here, almost zero. You have enough initial bonding strength here, tack, that actually keeps the pieces together and you can put them in the press and let them cure completely. You have a so-called open time window or the open time here between the finish of the drying time and the onset of too much crystallization, too much curing, so that you cannot join the parts anymore. So within the open time, let's take an example, Renio Ortec. Renio Ortec has a drying time of 10 minutes and an open time of up to 60 minutes. So in that open time window of 60 minus 10, so 50 minutes, you have time to actually join the pieces together and bond them. Now, as you can see here, after the open time has passed, the bonding strength increases pretty drastically up to a finished, fully cured, fully crystallized level up there. And again, this is without units, this is not to scale, it's just to illustrate the point. Now, we have a curing time. The curing time for contact adhesives is usually around two days, 48 hours. We say 72 hours if you add a cross-linker because that also needs time to react, but usually we're talking about two days. So within two days, the bonding strength increases to its final level. This doesn't mean that you have to wait for two days before you can handle the pieces because otherwise they would fall apart. That's not the case. Um, depending on the adhesive, the bonding strength increase might be rapid enough, even over tens of minutes or an hour or so, that you can already start grinding, start working on them when only a short time. And that is one of the things that sets different adhesives apart. Now with these concepts, you have a basic tool set to describe bonding problems to look at how adhesives are being used. So now let's go into detail. Let's have a look at the individual Renia products and what they can do.